everyone. It's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today was a busy day, but not for me. It was a busy day for Jim. <laughs> yeah, he's going, yeah. yeah. He, this morning, he went down to the apartment house with the pickup truck, and he loaded it with all the garbage that Emily left behind and all the things that she was throwing away. There was a lot, a real lot. Then I sent him to her house because when I when we were moving, I wanted her to put something in her trunk. She opened her trunk and her trunk was full of stuff. And I said, ah, Emily, and she's, if she's watching this, she'll hear her name. Emily, <laughs> <laughs> you can't have all this garbage in your car. You know, People judge you by your cars and and how if you, if your car is real sloppy it's like your it's like your yard. Did I put the dog in the house? Yeah, I did. How come I was here in toes? Maybe I have a, I a spook dog somewhere. Could be. I don't know. But um when I was like when um my mother used to say you keep your front step or your your entrance cleared and your front door cleared because people will judge your house by what you look like on the outside. So if you have a very nicely manicured yard, which we do, and if you don't have a lot of junk on your, on your um, doorstep or entry area, then, you know, they think the rest of the house is the same. It could be a real disaster in there, but at least it looks like it from, from the street view. Well, the cars are the same thing. When I used to help parents sometimes put their kids in the car, things would be falling out onto the ground. And it was amazing the stuff they'd have in there. Like even laundry detergent would fall out onto the ground. They had containers that were empty and they were in their car. Or they had cups and things that were in their car. So you have to keep your car clean. Otherwise, people think your house is messy if your car is messy. Um... He, what he did is he went to the dump, and I said to him, I says, transfer where? Transfer station. Tra yeah, transfer station. But I said to him, where does the Lone Ranger take his garbage? And I told him. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, 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 to the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. That's where it goes. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, 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 dump. We used to say that when we would be in the cow pasture camping. It was, uh, you know, when you're when you're camping or it's dark out and you're it's nighttime and it's a bunch of kids. Because it was, we were just kids. We weren't very old. We were old enough to where you could drive the jalopy down to the to the um, far pasture, and we were old enough to where we could set up the tarp. Now it wasn't a real tent for many many years. And when when we got oh probably closer into our later teens, my dad did buy us a, a nice canvas temp, tent. And I remember my brother saying, "Don't touch the canvas because if you touch the canvas, uh, moisture from oh that was another one. It just brought it to mind because I was saying there was a lot of stuff we used to say, and it would be we'd get dood on, dood on." <laughs> Is what we'd get because if you touch the canvas with your finger, the moisture would come in and it would be dripping on you, and you'd you're, you'd wake up and you'd find your bedding damp because moisture would be leaking in. That was another thing we used to say, do Dan, and it was, everything was funny. And when we had, we didn't know that we could have probably just mixed the pancake batter with water, and it probably would have been all right. But we used to have, because we had a cow, we had a lot of milk. And so we used to bring the pancake batter already mixed with the milk in it. And then we'd tie uh, like a hay rope, what what tied up the bales of hay. We used to call it Bale hay twine. rope. Bale twine is called, the real name, but we used to call it just hay rope. We used to tie that around the jar and then put the jar into the creek where the water was rushing and the water would keep the the milk cold because the temperature of the water was pretty chilly, pretty cool, the rushing water. In fact, the Amish in their house, the house that we went to in in Sugar Grove, yeah, we were in Sugar Grove. I had to think, I was going to say Springville. It wasn't Springville. It was Sugar Grove. When we went to Sugar Grove, I had met 
some Amish people when I worked at McDonald's and they invited me over and they wanted my husband to come and they wanted the kids to come. Well, I didn't know they wanted the kids to come, so we went this one time and they showed us around their house. Their houses are beautiful inside. And we have poor Amish in our area. We went to Ohio where they were very wealthy. Um, but the Amish around here, they really have old looking farmhouses and but the inside is just beautiful, beautiful wood. Well, they had a, a sink, a dry sink is where they did their dishes. And then they had this wet, what they called maybe a wet sink. I don't know what it was called, but it wasn't used to wash dishes. It was a trickle of a spring that would be running into this area. And they used to put their, their um, food that needed to be chilled or their milk or whatever underneath that and it would chill it down and then they would put it in their in their ice storage where the ice storage was with hay and ice and it was and this this home that we went to they actually had most of them have outhouses out away from the house well this one had a double seater connected to the house this lady was had, i guess was in an accident at one time and this is what she wanted because they would go to um, Texas for some kind of chelation therapy. Whereas now they have chelation therapy here. So she was, that's how she ended up at McDonald's. They used to go to McDonald's after her chelation therapy or before it. And that's how I met them. But it was really interesting. And we went there actually twice. And they don't typically invite total strangers to their house. Outsiders. Outside. We're, we're considered... Um, the English <laughs> is what we're considered, and they talked talked to the Dutch, um, what Dutch, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch. Dutch is what they talked their language. They they used they talked different, and they read, they could read. It's a form of German. Yeah, it is, but it was kind of interesting. And then they had Jim borrow a book. They wanted him to read this book. And I said, if we borrow it, we have to bring it back. And they go, that's okay. Bring the kids the next time. So we read the book. And when we went back, the kids were there and they had a bunch of kittens. And they probably were hoping we'd take a kitten, but we didn't want a kitten. And the kids had a real good time. And they made she made pie. A lot of people won't eat the Amish foods because they're afraid that they're they're not clean well the house was spotless and I'm sure she was very meticulous in preparing whatever we had and we had some pie and it was absolutely delicious I think that was everything um I did the joke I did the da -da -dump, da -da dump I was watching um Natalie B and she said she went to the dump and it was funny because she said I went to the dump and she said not meaning going to the bathroom <laughs> and it was like she is funny I get a kick out of her. Um, but that was it. So I hope you all had a great day. And I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. So bye.